Yalla bismillah. Auzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamü aleyküm. Selamun aleyküm. ve mevlana Muhammed Mustafa sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. Maşallah. Asli istedik. Taşı Muhammed Nazım Hakani sultanı kurubina onların şeyh-i şam kıvani maddeden hak ve hüccetullahi al-muhlesi. Yeah. We are from the <laughs> first school of Sufism is a school of manners and, and a school of discipline. And our discipline is Honey. if even even if we think we've reached to be a candle in the presence of the sun, you can't speak. You, in the presence of the fountain in which illuminates my heart, I can't speak. Means every ocean of reality, we take whatever drops we can take from his oceans, it's impossible to speak in his presence. In schools and universities, the discipline and the reality of the heart out. That for us, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani is a sunshine a treasure on this earth, a rare gem amongst the souls that God has sent upon this earth and that his light and that we have a, an honor to serve Maulana for the last 17 years, 25 years that Maulana found us as lost when we sing the song Amazing Grace that is not tangible. The grace of God illuminates within the hearts of very precious souls, what we believe to be the guides and saintly beings whom have dedicated their lives for the service of the divine. And their true service is they make no distinction between religion, between race, because, between color or and serve his creation. And We've been fortunate in our life that we came across Maulana Shaykh Hisham. He found us like, uh, like Yusuf in the well, the Prophet Yusuf who was put into the well, that a guide will come that when the seeker is in their hearts in need of something from the divine, God's grace comes. It means for once I was blind and now I see means that God's grace emanates through their souls, through their being and they're dispatched by the divine. And we were fortunate enough to be saved and continue to be saved by Mawlana Shaykh's presence, his teachings, his discipline, his sense of love, immense, immense love. It is like an apprenticeship that we accompanied, we learned and they taught us not only books but the knowledge of the heart, knowledge of practices. That this message from the Divine is an eternal message. That people of only religious doctrine, they tend to focus only on the world of form. And that's why you have all the dogma, all the arguments, all the fight life, only on the form. The world of form by its nature is meant to be separated from myself. <laughs> In school you call that plagiarizing. You take somebody's knowledge and then you put it as your, your, <laughs> your own. Let's see, you can't talk in front of the shake. Everything's from you, I feel, I feel shy saying. But Malana Sheikh is always teaching us that the world of form is a separate and by its nature it makes us to be separate. Hence the conflict, the arguments, 
all the separations in life, all the disagreements in life. Sufism and spiritual paths, all Gnostic paths, they teach that your religion and your religious practices, use it as a discipline for yourself. It means how to wash, how to pray, how to eat, how to take care of yourself, how to take care of your family, how to take care of your community. But you have to rise to a, a level of faith that's only the discipline of the body and the body goes like a horse. You clean it, take care of it, nurture it, you have to give food to it because you can't abuse that ride that God has given to you. But at the same time, don't try to worship it. Don't put so much onto it and so much importance onto that horse, eventually it's going into the grave. So then they begin to teach that this physicality, give it its discipline. But where we all come together is in the world of light. And in the world of light is where the realities and the dress of humanity begins to come. And from Mawlana Shaykh's teaching, it's like the water. That the, the vessel and the vehicle is the form. Water represents the singularity. In the world of faith, light plus light plus light only equals light. So I mean as many drops as we put into this cup, it's still but one. And the world of light represents singularity and oneness. The world of form is the separation and the argument and it's meant to be that way. It's not meant to everything to be homogenized and come together. It's more like a salad. You're supposed to enjoy the, the, the avocado and the lettuce and the tomatoes. You can't blend it together because then it becomes like baby's food or mushy. So that's the world of form but the world of the soul is where we all come together. In the world of the soul then there must be an eternal message. It means that in the understanding of the levels of the heart we have all the same prophets. The prophet Adam, what was his eternal message? Not the message that he gave only for his people, but in the message in the world of light, what was the Prophet Adam teaching us? That God has chosen us as his viceroys, as his representatives. And at every moment, Adam is coming to the earth. Because there's birth and souls that are coming at every moment upon this earth. So then to rise to the understanding that God has chosen us, wisdoms and realities bestowed upon the soul. So rise above your animal form. That it's not about just eating, drinking and using the facility. Because our way is based on contemplation. It means we pray, we do all, all the disciplines, but to contemplate. That when we're contemplating and asking, my Lord, what is the eternal message? These prophets will come and begin to inspire within the heart. And Prophet Adam salam, peace and blessings be upon him, will come. That God has given us the viceroy, the, the khalifa ship of the divine knowledges that are above the level of the angels. And the angels had to bow down out of respect to the knowledge that God had bestowed upon the soul of Adam. Peace and blessings be upon him. So it means there's an eternal message. When we begin to rise above just the form and say, no, you're different, I'm different, you're this religion, I'm not this religion, you're that. In the world, in the ocean of realities, everything begins to bring out all of its disciplines. We have from Adam, we have then the prophet Noah. Noah comes into our life and teaches, I built the ship. But you also have a ship in your life that God wants you to build. And that's your soul. Your soul is your ship. If you build it through testing and patience and perseverance, that soul like a ship will take off and it knows its way back to God. So that's why all the testing. So anybody who comes and says, Shaykh, I've had a real difficult life, I've had a lot of testings, a lot of presence. That those testings are meant to perfect the character of people. Not break you down and make you go towards, you know, all sorts of difficult things that people, so paths are supposed to enlighten people that God has a mission. That these tests, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that strength is a strength that should be put upon the soul. The soul becomes so powerful. It becomes so in love with the Divinely Presence once it's trained to understand. 
And that's what Noah comes into our life and begins to teach. That your soul will be built and it will know its way towards the Divinely Presence. And just to be short and go quickly through it, that Abraham, the Prophet Abraham, was thrown into a fire and comes into our life. If you take a path in which you want to improve yourself, God wants the fire of your anger to be put down. So everything will throw fires at you. Everything will test you to see how quickly you, the bad characteristics come out. So there's an eternal message. That's why the ocean of realities and the perfection that Prophet brought for us is by loving all the Prophets. And by taking a path of spirituality, we reach our own perfection. So it's not about clinging only to one Prophet and say, I follow this. But each Prophet, because God has no time, ascending and descending upon this earth. With no time means then there must be an, a message always for me. And the messengers must always be relevant for me. So it says that you want to take out your fire, you want to take out your flame, then control your anger. Every time you want to wash, we have a, a saying, an expression to recite, قُلْ يَا نَحْرُ كُنِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim. That as soon as you want to go wash, that my Lord make the fire to be cool and peaceful for me, as you made for the Prophet Abraham. And then brings down the fire, brings down the fire, and then to the Prophet Musa, Moses, peace and blessings be upon him. Salam that teaches us, and God saved me and took me to the promised land. That if you control your anger, control these bad characteristics, God will part the oceans of difficulty and free you from all of these oppression characteristics that are attacking instead of you rising to your angelic reality, you become very low egoistic. Nabi Musa, Moses comes and teaches, God will provide an opening, don't, don't despair. Just like how Pharaoh was running after him, he'll go to the side of the water and everything will part and will provide an opening for your salvation and for your movement towards paradise. Then the next prophet is Prophet Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, comes and teaches because it goes in the levels of the heart. The next prophet then comes to confirm that if God has parted the ocean for you, I'm here to show you how to rise. Our belief is that when they came to destroy the Prophet of God, the face was switched and God raised him to his Divinely Presence. Meaning that if you're taking this path of reality and if I free you because I find you to be sincere, all your enemies will be cut off. Means all your vices and bad desires, all that are trying to pull you down to an animalistic reality, I'll free you. If I free you, I'll raise you to my Divinely Presence. And then Sayyidina Isa, Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, comes into our life and begins to teach that when these desires drop, you'll find yourself ethereal, more of an angelic reality where you're continuously rising to the Divinely Presence. And that God saves you from these bad desires as you begin to rise and take you to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, the Prophet of Islam that comes and teaches how to enter into that world of light, how to love all the Prophets and how to path of effacing, of how to efface yourself from your desires continuously on how to make this cup all your life to be empty. As much as you're empty, as much, as much as God's grace continues to pour within that vehicle and that vessel and continue to bless that soul. Subhanahu wa bika rabbal izzat amma yasipun. As-salamu ala al-mursaleem wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. InshaAllah. And excuse me, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Forgive me. Forgive me. Say You After you, no.
الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين دستور يا سيدي يا سلطان الأنبياء والمرسلين دستور من أسله الله تعالى رحمة للعالمين دستور يا سيدي يا سلطان الأولياء والعارفين دستور يا سيدي قرب المتصرف مدد القرآن سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق we will show them our signs in the that it is the truth or it is real. One of the hidden meanings of this verse will show a specific group of people that he has chosen that in everything in the universe and in their own selves and when they find that, when they see that they are witnessing the manifestation of God, the appearance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that thing and in their own selves. This is the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabihi wa sallam when he told the sahabi, inna li kulli shay'in haqiqatan. Everything has a reality. So, it is impossible for and I say this as someone who knows Professor Burchak and from the University of Michigan. And as I speak, I, as, as someone that in the barak of our shiyukh, they have placed us in a position to try and understand how do you explain sainthood, wilaya, to outsiders in the universities. The fact is, it is impossible to understand wilaya, like Sayyidi Sheikh Nurjan said, because the outward of it will lead you to perplexity, to doubt. Because awliya Allah, the ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do things that the mind cannot understand. So Sayyidi Shaykh Al-Akbar Muhyiddin gives an example. This is like the haqiqah of wilaya, the haqiqah of sainthood. He says, he's addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, كيف أعرفك وأنت الباطن الذي لا يعرف? He says, how can I know you? When you are the hidden, the inward, who cannot be known. وكيف لا أعرفك وأنت الظاهر الذي إلي في كل شيء تتعرف? And how can I not know you when you are the outward, that's one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, batin and zahir. When you are the outward who reveals himself to me in everything. Like the verse of the Quran, we will show them our signs in the horizon and ourselves. Everything that appears, appears by the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be and it is. Then he says, كيف أوحدك ولا وجود لي في عين الأحدية سبحان الله You are one when I have no existence in that presence in that presence where you are one I cannot exist because you're saying Allah is one how can you exist if you say you exist and Allah exists then you are saying there is two he says how can I claim you are one when I have no existence in that presence but then he says, وَكَيْفَ لَا أُوَحِدُكَ وَالتَّوْحِيدُ سِرِّ الْعُبُودِيَّةِ But then how can I not declare you are one when to make this declaration is the secret of worship? These two statements by Shaykh Al-Akbar, this is the secret of wilaya. Awliya Allah, the saints of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom we believe they are perfect mirrors that reflect the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you are in their presence, then that is the closest sign you have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are in the presence of our shaykh, that is the closest door, the closest window to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But something changes, like now we are in a Shaykh Hisham, who is the source, the source for our closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. secret here. 
which is we are in the presence of a murid who is not the same level as the other murids. This is a subtle secret of adab, as Sheikh Nurjan said. The reality of Sufism is adab. What is the secret? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 124,000 prophets. And all of them know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than the rest of His creation. But there is one of them who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than the other 124,000 that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa So when one of them is in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, things change. Then those other 123,999, they have to now seek entry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that one, through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Two reasons. One, they know that that one knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than the rest of them. And two, they know that when that one is there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing himself in a way that the rest of them cannot handle. So if they were to breach the adab, they can burn. They can be annihilated not just their outer form, they can be annihilated from existence altogether. Like the Prophet Sallallahu says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has 70,000 veils of lights and darkness. If He were to lift them, then the light of His countenance would burn all that is in existence. So the same thing when you are with the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when you're by yourself, you approach Him directly. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when you're in the presence of the Wali, especially your shaykh, the adab changes. Now you have to go through the door that is more beloved to the Prophet ﷺ, that is higher in ranks of closeness to the Prophet ﷺ, than you are. Because if you don't, you're not going to get that qurba, that nearness, one. And two, you don't know what tajalli is revealing itself at that time that might burn you, that might burn us. So similarly here, when we are in the presence of a murid who is closer to the sheikh than the rest of us, who witnesses the sheikh, not like the rest of us do, we have to be careful. The adab is that we now begin to approach the sheikh through that one. Like we approach the Prophet Sallallahu through that wali, like we approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet sallallahu Because we don't know what is coming from the heart of the shaykh at that moment that might be too heavy for us to carry. Because the shaykh gives two types of things. He gives voluntarily to the heart of the murid, but then like the sun, they give. The rays are always giving. And if you're not careful, if you're not wearing those ultraviolet glasses, you might not be able to handle what comes. So the advanced murid, the one who is more advanced than you, the one who is closer to you, to the sheikh, that's your glasses. You wear that glasses. You approach the sheikh through the binoculars of that one. So the reality of wilaya is perplexity. And those of us who are studying in the universities or who are reading a book, we have to understand that the affairs of the awliya is of taste. It is not of rational faculty. We can read, we can memorize their books, we can read about their lives, but if we do not taste what they have tasted, we have to at least write that, that down in our books. We have to say that we have merely studied the outer reality of them, but we don't know what they have experienced. We don't know what they are tasting. Because the way they understand the universe and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet is not like we understand it. We view it from ourselves and they view it from ourselves. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wal afu minkum. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Ahsantum. Tfadlan. Sheikh. Sheikh al Noor. Not enough. Not enough. I want to hear.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. May Allah's peace and May our Lord's blessings and peace be upon all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us through our life. What can I say? MashaAllah, Sheikh Nurjan have spoken pearls and Sheikh Ali has spoken pearls. And I'm shy to speak, but we'll, we will read from Maulana's book, Alhamdulillah. My father said, open the book and read. So that's what we've been doing for the past few years months and inshallah we continue to read from the, the lectures and wisdoms of our shiyukh, of our masters. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-Ali al-Azim. The story of Sayyidi al-Qudba al-Mutasarrif madad ya Sultan al-Awliya. The story of Sayyidi ya Sultan al-Anbiya madad madad ya Rijal Allah Rijal Allah Rijal Allah أعينونا بعون الله وكون عونا لنا بالله عسى نحظى بفضل الله. I will ask Imam Sahib to recite the verse. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الذين آمنوا يقاتلون في سبيل الله والذين كفروا. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الذين آمنوا يقاتلون في سبيل الله والذين كفروا يقاتلون في سبيل الطاغوت فقاتلوا أولياء الشيطان إن كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا صدق الله العظيم Our Lord has sent instructions to us These instructions are contained in holy books to find our way, we have to read the holy books. There is no way to find the way to our Lord without reading holy books. So whoever has not read a holy book, that's the first thing we need to do. Leave all the philosophers, leave all the other books, go to a holy book, Bible, Torah, Psalms, and Holy Quran. God did not leave us without instructions. He has sent his holy messengers with instructions to find the way. We are all trying to find a way. Everybody on earth, every human being, when you ask them, what do you want? They say, we want to find our way to our Lord. And everybody has taken a separate way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord is showing the ways to Him through the holy books. There's no other way to reach His divine pleasure other than the holy books. So if somebody has not taken a holy book, our instructions to them is pick up a holy book and read. And that's how we get to the divine presence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy Quran, in Surah An-Nisa, The ones who believe, everybody that believes in the Lord has to know this. The ones that have believed in their Lord, they have to fight, and they fight in the way of their Lord. And the ones that have not gained faith yet, they are unbelievers, they fight in the way of taghut, of evil. It's very simple. We are on the wrong way. Human beings are on the wrong way. If we were not on the wrong way, why would the Lord send prophets? If we are treading the right way to the Lord's presence, why is our Lord sending prophets with messages and holy books? That means we are on the wrong way. We are going on the way that will lead to evil, to disaster, to perish, to perishment, perishing, so we will perish on that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord is saying, I will show you the way, come back. Come back to me and fight for me. Fight who? Who, who are we going to fight? The believers have to fight. Maulana says, our teacher, Grand Sheikh, Maulana Sheikh Nazim, that the first thing a servant must do, we are all servants. The first thing that a servant must do is to 
free himself or free herself from their four enemies. These are the enemies we fight. Our way is not to fight outside here or, or there. No, our way is to fight our own selves. Somebody fighting his own self. They will say, you're crazy. How can you fight your own self? Oh, there are things in ourselves. There are creatures in ourselves. And there are four. Our way is to fight these four enemies. The way the Sufism or Tariqats or Islam, Islam itself is to fight these four enemies. Rasulullah has come to teach us how to fight these four enemies. Prophets have come to teach us how to fight these four enemies. Our life is not anything but fighting these four enemies. Leave everybody alone. Leave everyone outside alone. We have to turn into ourselves and fight these four enemies. And that's what we learn from grand sheikhs. That's what we learn from saints. How to fight these four enemies. What are these four enemies? The first thing, we are in the first station, the station of the servanthood, of a servant. Whoever has touched that station has freed himself from the four enemies. We have not reached this, the station of servanthood yet to our Lord. We are still servants of these four partners. First is nafis, ego. Our own ego. Second is hawa, desires. Third is shaitan. And fourth is this world. This world is our enemy. People try to take more and more out of this world where they should be taking less and less out of this world. Four enemies. This is our way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us in his holy books how to do that. So everybody can go back and read the holy book and come train with the shaykh. Train with the shaykh how to implement these instructions in holy books. The shaykh doesn't teach anything out of a holy book. It's all in there. All the instructions, all the teachings, all the trainings of shaykh are from the holy books. So if we don't know the holy books, we will object on the shaykh. If we, we don't know the instructions that are in holy books, we will tell the shaykh, where are you bringing this from? So that's, that is, that's what we need to do. First, we need to learn the holy Quran for Muslims and for the ones that have not accepted Islam, they need to go back to their holy book and read it. One saint said, and we'll just finish there, the four enemies, as we are saying, the four enemies. One is dunya. And the silah dunya liqa'ul khalq. Concordia. <laughs> dunya will suck you in by meeting other people. Oh, what do you have to offer for us? Or what do we can offer for you? What investments we can do with you? What uh, potentials do we have together? How much of this world we can amass? How much of this world we can take? Let's sit together. Let's have a meeting. Let's have a conference. So meeting, meeting people, liqa'ul khalq, meeting people is the weapon of dunya. Wasijnuha al-uzla. And the prison, the counter weapon that we have to use against dunya is isolation. Don't go. Whenever we are meeting people, we are being sucked into dunya. When we are meeting people, the first thing you start to hear, how much money they are making, how much money they want to do, what houses they have, who took what, what they are aspiring. These are all things that will suck you into dunya. So our way is uzla, our way is isolation. Our way is not the regular way that people take nowadays. Our ways is to isolate ourselves, seclusion. That's why on this, it's in books. People read books, and then we want to be saints. And no. First, you have to leave dunya. This is your first enemy. This is the first one that is proclaiming godness and lordship besides your Lord's lordship. Dunya says, I am your Lord, worship me. Abdul Dunya, the servant of the dunya. So awliyaullah have said that the first enemy's weapon, dunya's weapon, this world's weapon is meeting people. 
And it's the counter weapon you have to use against dunya is isolating yourself from people. Concordia. <laughs> they sucked you into dunya and alhamdulillah you, have, you were not sucked and you came back. But you, would, you had the potential to make deals, to make contracts, to be famous, to make money, to go to Hollywood, to make CDs. You want to be discovered, but <laughs> Alhamdulillah, no one discovered you, Sheikh. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept you with us. <laughs> dunya, dunya is out there. You meet with people, they offer you contracts. We will make you the head of the university. I'm sorry, professors, but <laughs> this is reality. People go to be heads of something to be known, to be famous, to make money, to make this and to make that. This is dunya. The weapon of dunya that we, against dunya, that we are learning from our shuyukh is isolation, seclusion. If you're ready to be secluded and isolate yourself, this is the way. If you are not ready yet, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, down the line will make us all ready. All of us were not ready, but at, at, at the due time, we were all made ready. Second, enemy or second partner in our Lord's Lordship that that one is claiming that he is also a Lord is ego. The, the, the lower self that we have. The lower self says, Ana rabbukumul a'la, I am your highest Lord. Obey me. Make me happy. Our ego, this is the order that it gives us. Make me happy. Do everything to make me happy. Take me out, take me in, give me this, give me that, buy me this, buy me that. Your ego tells you, make me happy. So how do you make your ego happy? You wake up at 12 midnight and you stay up until Ishraq, until sunrise. <laughs> they say the weapon of the nafis, awliya Allah, silahun nafis, a nawm. The weapon of the ego is to sleep. And it's counter, the counter weapon we use against it is what? A sahar. To be up. That's why awliyaullah, if you read in the books, because we all read books, awliyaullah, they stay with the same wudu from Aisha until Fajr. They, say, they stay up praying, reading Quran, worshipping their Lord from late, from, uh, late night until sunrise. That was the ego does not like. So that's what we need to do. If you're ready to come for Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud, like we usually do in Ramadan, and then after Ramadan we forget. Everybody is sleeping again. Come to us. If you're not ready to wake up after midnight until sunrise, this is not the right place. But inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us do that. So first is what? Seclusion. Uzla. Don't be known. Or else dunya will take you away. Second, stay up at night. Don't make your ego happy. What is the third one? Shaitan. Silahu shaitan al-shaba'. Awliya Allah have said that silahu shaitan, the weapon of shaitan, is satiety, is to be full. And its counter weapon is a jew, hunger. And hadith says that you have to make the exits or the gates of shaitan narrow by hunger. When, when we are with shaitan, shaitan wants us to be full. So what do they say? Let's wine and dine. <laughs> Let's drink and eat. Uh, what happens after that? Uh, a lot of people know what happens after that. Shaitan is there. Shaitan makes people eat and drink. He attacks human beings through satiety. So that's why we fast. That's why Islam teaches us to fast, to make, us, to make ourselves hungry. Because when we are hungry, we have no power to do anything. We limit shaitan. We fight against shaitan. So seclusion against dunya. Being up, it's against ego. And being hungry is weapon against shaitan. And the fourth is al-hawa, the desires. And awliya Allah, they have said that silahu al-hawa al-kalam. The weapon of desires is, is conversation. Vain talk. 
useless, frivolous speech. Lahu. Because in that speech, when we are speaking with somebody, when we are conversing with a group of people, we are conversing according to our desires. We like this one, we don't like this one. We gossip about that one, we make problems about the other one. We do this, we do that. This is the, the weapon of the desires, conversation, vain talk. So we are taught, وَسِجْنُهُ الصمت سِلَاحُهُ الْكَلَامُ الهوى سلاحه الكلام وسجنه الصمت The weapon of desires is to converse and the counter weapon we use against desires is to be silent that's why our way what, what do our shuyukh give us? zikr sit in a corner and be silent and make zikr don't converse because in conversing to people everybody falls in that trap of gossiping of, of thinking bad about somebody or, of, or making a lie about somebody. We all experience that. So for desires, what we need to do is to do the counter weapon, which is some. So training in this way, training under the guidance of our shiyukh consists of four things. Seclusion, uzla, samt, silence, uh, sleep, uh, staying up, and the fourth, hunger. Darwish, they used to find, not only Darwish, in, in Sahaba, uh, stories of companions, they used to find one day, two dates, min, uh, maximum a day or two. Sometimes they would go a week without food. So the way of the yogis, the gurus, the shiyukh, the saints, the Darwish, whatever you want, the, the way is for seclusion, hunger, uh, no sleep, and silence. So if you're ready to, to go through that, you are in the right place. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, we never go hungry with Mawlana. We always eat. <laughs> we never go silent with Mawlana. We always speak. <laughs> we speak of, we make zikr. We eat all, we eat, yeah. We eat from Mawlana's barakah. We make zikr with Mawlana's barakah. We are up at night with Mawlana's barakah. And we uh, are not sucked into dunya. We are always in seclusion with Mawlana's Barakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us always on this right track. This is, the, this is the track, this is the way of shiyukh. This is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The four, seclusion, isolate, seclusion, hunger, uh, silence, and worshipping at night, staying up at night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me if I have said something wrong, forgive all of us that has come, had, have come here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand this way, this Sufism. It's not only about books. Sufism basically is training. And training at the foot of a master. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us always at the feet of our masters. Amen. Always on the right way. Wa min Allah tawfiq bi hurmat al-habib wa bi hurmat al-fatiha. Fatiha. In order to sum, sum it, the summary for what they, all of them they said. You said something, he said something, he, the other one said something else. This summary that we have to put in front of our eyes is that Prophet ﷺ has said that I have been sent to humanity to perfect their manners and their characters. He didn't say something, anything else. I have been sent by our, by my Lord, the to perfect the behavior of human beings. That is the message of Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi afdal salatu wasalam. That is the message of Islam. I would leave the podium for Professor. Might be he has asked question from you or there's his students. No, I mean, I would just like to thank you for the opportunity to be here. I know my students really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to hear um, what you have to say. Um, so I think I'll, I'll leave it Give at the that. Give the mic. Uh, thank you, Sheikh Hisham. Um, I'd 
I don't think I have any questions, but I just want to thank you. It's an honor to be here, and I know I speak on behalf of my students as well. Um, they're thrilled to be here. Um, we've we have to ask them. Uh, you, you can ask them. I, I would love it if you tested them, actually. You can, you can, you can ask them whatever you'd like. Um, no, no, you have to give them A+, plus, all of them. <laughs> I kind of have to do that now, too, so there you go. Um, but thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Um, and I know that we have learned a lot. And um, yeah, thank you. So we will, uh, Sheikh Ali asked me if you can sing two songs. Of course. <laughs> These are songs I put my kids to sleep with. No, I'm sure. <laughs> oh. It's like breathing. It's very easy. Um, but sometimes our brothers don't like to breathe sometimes. Ho, ho, ho. Like you mean it, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. One father, one mother. One home we call earth, one truth to uncover, one creator who creates. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, see illusions they see many when there is one these ears hear confusion then there are two when there was one ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho oh. Oh, 
لله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله إلهي سلم الأمة من الآفات والنقمة ومن هم ومن غمة بآل البدر يا الله صلاة صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيبي وصلي على النبي البري بلا عد ولا حصري وآل سادة غري بآل البدر يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيبي اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد عليه السلام صلاة تدوم وتهدى إليك ممرت ليالي وطول الدواء صلي وسلم على نبينا محمد عليه السلام صلاة تدوم وتهدى إلي ما مرت ليالي ما شاء الله ما شاء الله إلى حضرة النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وآله وصحبه الكرام إلى أرواح إخواننا الأنبياء والمرسلين وخدماء شرائع وإلى أرواح الأئمة الأربعة وإلى أرواح مشايخنا في طريقة النقشبندية العادية خاصة سيد الشعب الله الفائز الدهستاني سيد الشيخ محمد نازم الحقاني ولنا معهم ولهم من الفاتحة دعاء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مخفورا وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا اللهم أكرمنا ولا تهنا اللهم أعطنا ولا تحرمنا اللهم آثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا اللهم ارضنا وارض عنا إلهي أنت مقصودنا 
رضاؤك مطلوبنا أنت ولينا في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين اللهم أعنا على أعدائنا يا رب دنيا نفسها وشيطان اللهم تقبلنا وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين اللهم اجمعنا بسيدنا صاحب الزمان اللهم شرفنا بخدمته وبمبايعته وبلقائه يا رب العالمين وصل يا رب وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وعافنا وعاف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحمنا وارحم أمواتنا وأموات أموات المسلمين بحرمة من أنزلت عليه سر سورة الفاتحة I think, Professor, any any question? I think um, would my students be able to meet you? Um, would my students be able to meet you? If they can? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, if that's okay, if that would be. Um, I don't think we have any um, specific questions, but I think yeah. they would. Yeah. You, you, you can ask him to come forward. Okay. Yeah. If you guys would like to come. Ah, yeah. Please come here. Sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.